Hey everyone, welcome back to our Astronomy Master's program for YouTube. My name is Tony from Space Fun This Year. I'll be your host, and if you haven't been following along, I'm teaching you everything that I learned in my master's program as we learned it. So today we'll be talking about the science of astronomy and how it's progressed and changed throughout time, all the way back from ancient times. Now this includes the ancient roots to the Greeks through pseudoscience and all the way to astrology and what astronomy is now. Astrology will be a fun episode. <laughs> so in this episode, we'll learn about ancient science, where it all started before we had modern scientific formulas and practices and things like that. So scientific thinking actually comes naturally to us. By about one years old, a baby notices that objects fall to the ground when they drop it, and if they let go of the ball, or whatever, it falls. If she pushes a plate of food from her high chair, it falls to the ground too. She continues to drop all these kinds of objects, and they plummet to the earth. Now through her powers of observation, the baby will learn all about the physical world and find that things fall when they're not supported. And eventually, to my wonderful, wonderful astonishment, she'll stop testing it with my favorite rockets. <laughs> so one day, I'll give the baby a helium balloon, and when she releases it, to her surprise, it'll rise to the ceiling or the sky. Her understanding of the universe must now be revised. She now knows the principle that all things fall doesn't really represent the whole truth. Even though it serves her quite well most of the time, it'll be years before she learns about the atmosphere and the force of gravity and the concept of like bending light and density and understand why the balloon rises when most other objects fall. So for now, she's like super delighted to observe something new and unexpected. But that baby's experience with falling objects and balloons, it basically is scientific thinking. In essence, science is a way of learning about nature through careful observation and trial and error experiments. And just as learning to communicate through language or art or music, it's a gradual process for the child, the development of science has been a gradual process for humanity. Science in its modern form requires painstaking attention to detail, relentless testing of each piece of information to ensure its reliability, and a willingness to give up old beliefs that are not consistent with observed facts about the physical world. So like, if a flat earther needs to accept that the earth is not flat, that is very hard to do. Even if they're wrong, it's still a hard thing to do. And for professional scientists, these demands are the hard work part of the job. But at heart, professional scientists are just like the baby with the balloon, delighted by the expected and motivated by these rare moments when they, all of us, learn something new about the universe and they prove themselves wrong. Now, astronomy is regarded as the oldest science. Humans have been making careful observations of the sky for thousands of years, and part of the reason for this interest in astronomy probably comes from our inherent curiosity as humans, but ancient cultures also discovered that astronomy had practical benefits for timekeeping and other things, so keeping track of seasonal changes and navigation, and a really cool example comes from the people of Central Africa. Although we don't know exactly when they developed this skill, people in some regions learned to predict rainfall patterns through observations of the moon. Pretty cool. And the impact of ancient astronomical observations is still with us in our modern measurements of time. For instance, the length of a day is the time it takes for the sun to make one full circuit of the sky. The length of a month comes from the moon's cycle of phases. And our year is based on the cycle of the seasons. And check this out. The seven days of the week were actually named after the seven planets of ancient times, which were the Sun, the Moon, and the five planets that are easily visible to the naked eye. So Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And note also that the ancient definition of a planet, uh, which meant wandering star, applied to any object that appeared to wander among the fixed stars, the background. And that's why the Sun and Moon were on the list of planets and the Earth was not, because we can't see our own planet moving through the sky. Now even telling time down to the minute came from ancient observations of the sky. Like how some 4,000 years ago, the Egyptians divided daytime and nighttime into 12 equal parts each. This is how we got our 12 hours of AM and PM. And the abbreviations AM and PM stand for Latin terms anti-meridian and post-meridian, respectively, which means before the middle of the day and after the middle of the day. And throughout time, we'll see civilizations create monuments to mark the seasons, like Stonehenge and Templo Mayor in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. And this led to civilizations using the sun to inform the solar calendar, which is our typical 12-month calendar we use today based on 
one revolution around the sun. Everyone, that is, except for practicing Muslims, who still use the lunar calendar, which is a 354-day year with 12 29 to 30 day months. So the, the study of ancient astronomical achievements is a rich, rich field of research. Many ancient cultures made careful observations of the planets and stars, and some left remarkably detailed records. The Chinese, for example, they began recording astronomical observations at least like 5,000 years ago, and this allowed ancient Chinese astronomers to make super important discoveries. By the 15th century, the Chinese had already built a great observatory in Beijing, which still stands today. Now, we can also study written records from ancient Middle Eastern civilizations, such as those in Egypt and Babylon, and the story continues throughout history. Every single century, every single decade, science moved things forward in the way that we see time, seasons, the world around us, and everything. So, this is just the beginning of our discussion on how astronomy started and how it's changed throughout time. So thank you for joining us on this quick lesson. We'll see you guys next week as we dive into more ancient roots of astronomy and how it's progressed through time all the way up to astrology. Oh, okay. If this is the first video you've seen and you want to start from the beginning of the master's program, you can check out this video here or this playlist rather, and it'll take you to the beginning. Thank you so much for joining. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you're alerted when I post another video. Uh, we're doing these like three times a week, so stay caught up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.